<laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Alright. I have a question. want to know what Docker is? Sure. You get a lot of questions about what Docker is. Docker is this really cool thing. They have stickers for it. All my other awesome stickers. So, what is Docker? Question that you guys are asking, and that is why you aren't here. So, Docker is a container manager, a container runtime, and an awesome tool all around. But what does it let you do? Well, it lets you run your services inside a contained environment on the cloud or in your local data center, or even on your own machine. And what's great about it, it scales incredibly fast. What this allows you to do is run Docker either on your local machine or in the cloud or multi-host environment. And it's really super easy and it's really fast. So how do we do this? Well, one command, the Docker command. It's all you need. And these other ones, so that's an <laughs> <laughs> So speaking of this how does Docker work and what makes it so awesome? So it comes down to this versus that. Containers versus virtual machine. You all know what a virtual machine is. It's a basically a machine that is virtualized in the cloud. So what is a container? Well, containers are a bit easier than a virtual machine. It is literally just your app and its binaries and libraries associated with it running on top of the Docker engine, running on top of the host OS. That's compared to a virtual machine where you actually have a machine on top of a hypervisor, on top of a machine. So there's a lot of overhead here, and it takes a lot of extra like, resources to run a VM versus running a container. What's also great about containers is you can take this, and because it's just like spinning up the process and not spinning up the machine, you can scale like that. You guys get that? You can scale like this, <laughs> that fast. Once again, one process can scale to that, that fast. Try to try bring up this many virtual machines that fast. It's not going to happen. So what do you need to do this? One command, docker run. You can run a container, it's really just a tarball of your, of your app and all its binaries, you just run. <laughs> that easy. But what are all these? Well, these make Docker even better and more awesome. So the Docker machine, you can create hosts in the cloud on DigitalOcean, on Amazon, in local VMs. And with just this one command, it will create and provision a cloud provider or a VM to run Docker as your remote host. And then you can go back to that Docker run command and run your container on the cloud that easily. So, really do read. But what if I have multiple containers that I want to link together to monetize my app and separate concerns like us good software engineers like to do? Well, with Docker Compose, you can take these containers, you can put them all into one local isolated network, and take this and deploy it on your cloud just as easily as you can deploy a single container. That easy. Now, what if you have you know, multiple machines in your cloud and you want to run a cluster? Well, Docker can do that for you as well. With Docker Swarm, it will take all of your remote Docker hosts and make them look like one virtual host. So you run Docker Run, your multi-container application. It will take it, it will schedule it out on the cloud, and it's wonderful and magic. So that's really like a great quick overview of Docker in probably under 30 seconds. But there's a little bit more as of just today that I stuck in here at the end. Docker is awesome. Docker recently purchased this wonderful company it has this beautiful UI for running development containers locally on your machine. So you can just bring this up and say you want to have a Redis cluster or a Redis machine. Hit the create button and then you have Redis running on your machine. And this goes on and on and on. So like find craft servers, rethink the view Jenkins, anything. So all these things prepackaged binaries from the Docker hub you can pull down and run locally on your machine. So next time you're going to go set up MySQL on your computer, to, you know, have a database to use, just use Docker and then connect with that. It's that simple. So that's it for the slide part of the presentation. Who wants to see Docker be awesome? Woo! Yeah, there we go. 
So I have played you right there. So, Docker is cool. This is the Docker man page that tells you lots of stuff. Let's see what I have running here. I actually have to initialize my Docker environment variable. So it will read from the Docker host. So actually, I can show you. We go environment here. Let's see that I have. This is Docker host. So this, the Docker command will look for that um, environment variable to go look up the Docker host. So this can be um, using the Docker machine command. I can set these up to another remote host, which in this case is I have a digital ocean droplet that I can run Docker up there as well. Uh, I'll just run it locally for now using Google Docker. Now I have where am I going to oh, I have Nginx running out there right now. So with Docker PS you can list all your running containers <coughs> I can kill that just as easily. Okay, first couple of others. So to see how easily it is to bring up um, Nginx, for example, the Docker run command that I was talking about earlier, um, takes a couple of flags that are useful, C, which gives you an uh, allocated UI shell, and an I to make it interactive, kind of you know useful. Uh, you can also just daemonize it with D, and it'll run it in the background, and it won't you know, give it an uh, allocated log for your terminal session. Which is nice to run. Uh, so with TI, and I can also open up some ports on here, like AD80. So what this will do is it's AD um, external to the container and an AD internal to the container. So what's nice about Docker as well, it is port agnostic. You get uh, you get a port pool that you can pull a port out and slap on the outside of your container, but inside your container you're always listening on the same port. So you can run multiple Nginxes on the same machine, listening on port 80, or your app can listen on port 3000. You have multiple of them running on the same machine, but externally they have all different ports to load them. And it's simple as running Nginx. Nothing really happens because Nginx doesn't have any output logs yet. As I prepare for this presentation. So I will navigate to the um, Docker host IP. Go to that and you can see, voila, well, Nginx is up and running. Back to the log, you can see I've I went to that page. So that's super easy. Um, what else is really cool about it is you can basically have different OS environments without having to boot a, a virtual machine up. So I can go ahead and run Ubuntu here. <laughs> and like it says, I can't have Ubuntu pulled locally. So they will go out to the Docker Hub and pull down the base image of Ubuntu, which is all the binaries and libraries that ship with Ubuntu. It pulls them all down, and then it will launch the bash executable inside of that environment. So what you don't have inside that environment that you don't have to do is you know boot up the entire system. Because there's no boot process needed because we already have a kernel that's booted and is handling all our processes. So that bash process gets its run on that kernel, but it gets its own isolated file tree and yeah, it's an isolated process. You can also set uh, resource limits. I just I gave my uh, VM earlier, so I don't have to cache the tickets now. So, this is cool But, the purpose is fine. I can run Fedora. Fedora. So, you see over here, I have bash and LS here. So this is essentially um, a new bunching machine. Uh, but what's cool about it is, just like VMs, I can go ahead and do that. Um, <laughs> we'll add the things. Uh, please yell at me for some things. But oh, I deleted LS, and now I don't have anything on the machine. What I can do is just that quickly. Everything's back up and running. <laughs> so also note if you know Git, 
doesn't ship on Ubuntu by default, um, which I think is kind of stupid. And I want an image that has Git installed. So I'll go ahead and do that. If I run Docker PS, you can see that my Ubuntu image is running. And what's really cool about these images is they fire off a base image, but they're actually built up on GIFs of file systems. So what I'm right now doing right now is I'm manipulating that Ubuntu file system and installing the Git on it. So I can actually um, do a Docker GIF of this current running container, and you can see all the files I added and things that I changed. So the Docker images, if you notice, it pulls down a, few, a couple different things. <laughs> so there's pulling down multiple hashes. Um, so just like Git, there's like kind of a, a graph built up of your changes in history over time to an image. And it uses that to build up your base image. So I have Git now installed on this Docker machine. If I, if I commit that, it spits back a long hash, which is an image hash at this point. And this here. I don't even have to do that, right? <coughs> yeah. So this here is now the bunch of machine that has to get on. So you see how that's useful. You can like install your entire application, all your dependencies, get it up and running on here, and then commit it. And you can take that container and you can push this up remotely to servers and distribute this because it's, it's literally it's just a tarball behind it, behind doors. Um, no more fancy than that, but basically it's just a tarball. Um, but that's you know, kind of not very you know, useful if you have to build your images like that. It's kind of a manual process. Um, we can actually use uh, Docker files, uh, which I have an example of. So this is this is a this is a Docker file. Basically, it's an instruction set for how for what you would run on that container to get it up to that point. So I'm starting for this case. I'm starting from a base image of nginx, and I'm copying some files in um, from my local directory the context around that Docker file. And in the nginx documentation, you know, like you put things in user share and nginx HTML, and it will host them. So if I run Docker build in this directory, it will actually build. Um, We'll build this, and then get to back an image hash again that I can actually tag and give a name and push up to the Docker file. So you can see how it's a really powerful tool for automation and also deployment. What's great about this as well is because the environment's all the same between everything. You know, you're testing QA, production staging, and everything. You know, we're all always the same. So I can give someone, someone can pull down this directory that has to the Docker installed in the machine or has support for Docker and start Docker. And everything works just to have I have it work on my local development and how it works in production. So there's no worrying about dependencies between different development machines. So you can go to your manager and confidently run on his computer your demo app that you wanted to show him if that was getting work. So that's about all I have in terms of um, features and a great fast overview. And I will now turn off to questions. Is there a private version of Docker Hub? There is. Um, there's actually a couple. Uh, there is, so by the way, everything, docker.com, there's um, Moby Doc. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that has you know, a lot of wonderful documentation on it. Um, there is an enterprise registry hub that you can uh, purchase. Uh, I think it's, there's still like, it's only like $10 or even uh, to just get the updates for it. You pay a one-time fee and then not get the updates. Uh, but, but also what the registry gives you um, automated build as well with GitHub hooks. So uh, if you push up to your GitHub repository, you have a webhook set up, it tells the Docker registry, hey, there's a change, you can pull it down that, rebuild the container, and it pushes it up to the registry for you to pull it down. So you can use that to build your stuff, or you can manually build and, and ship things as well, which is sometimes faster for development if you have a private registry. But you can automate the entire process once you have that set. And then uh, the registry also has web books as well for when builds are finished for then your deployment process. 
Uh, do you see any big downsides to doing this over a VM? Because you went over a bunch of the pros. Do you see any cons from what you were saying? So, why do you need a VM? To uh, have a machine that I can destroy with the time that help us a number of machines at a time. You can do that with containers. Yeah. Is there anything that you see that's negative over them with the VM? So, uh, I'm going to be very biased about this because I absolutely love Docker. <laughs> and what's great about Docker is it makes multi-tenant hardware incredibly efficient. So you can pack a lot of these processes together on a single kernel. Uh, there are some security concerns with Docker um, that some other container providers are trying to fix. Uh, where you, If you actually launch your process as a root process inside the container and you know specific information about your host machine, you can actually break outside of your um, which is obviously a problem because then you break outside of the container with your privileges. So that, however, is very difficult to do because that's granted that you know information about the host machine, such as like particular mount points for drives and other situations like that. So by the point if you try brute forcing that, you're going to get caught by something and your container is going to shut down. Building up this question, what if I'm some weirdo who likes to develop on Windows? Um, so, Boot for Docker still works on Windows. Um, so, right now, Docker and libcontainer, which is the backing um, of containers in general on the Linux kernel, are like a specific to the Linux kernel. However, Docker has announced support that with Windows, uh, you will be able to run Windows Docker containers in a Windows environment. So, they're not the same containers, so they'll be specific Windows containers. But, um, you can run a Windows environment on a Windows machine with containers. The same story for you know, like PFP based or any other sort of esoteric hardware setup. So, um, I don't know the specifics on that, but what Docker needs to run is the Linux kernel. Uh, so, their version of uh, boot to Docker, like VM ISO that they ship, is, is very, very lightweight and just runs the Docker daemon. But you, I've run um, in production, I've run things with CoreOS, which is built to run as a cluster and to run containers. It's like its sole purpose. Um, and then I've run things with Dora, Ubuntu, what have you, all to just run Docker, and all my containers have run exactly the same So there's lots of platforms that are supported. Yeah, and then for Windows, if you want to do the Linux development, it's the same way with on Mac. Because for example, on Mac, um, it's, a, it's a Unix base, but it doesn't support the container. Yet, probably never. Uh, so we just run it in a, in a virtual machine. And the same thing with Windows. Yeah. So are containers, um, is that a concept that exists outside of Docker? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, um, that's actually something that Linux had for a while. Um, and then Docker kind of matured into a nice um, yeah. user interface, essentially, yeah. command line tool set for building containers and managing them and ports and which is all of uh, with lib container and process isolation has existed and it's actually used in the kernel already. Um, so essentially it is file tree isolation and process isolation. But then that's a little bit more difficult to do um, and deploy in a nice easy way. Docker makes that incredibly easy for you and makes containers incredibly easy. So containers are an idea that is existed before Docker. Got excited about Docker now? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.